Today we'll be introducing the Plus Social Good community and be sharing best practices and tips on how you can make the best of this global platform. Just a reminder that the website we're talking about is www.plussocialgood.org. A little bit about Plus Social Good. Plus Social Good is a powerful community of over 25,000 members, fans, and followers from 148 countries around the world, creating a space for discussion of today's biggest problems and solutions. These are people who don't view their work as operating within a silo. They want to work together across sectors on the biggest global issues of our time. Today, we're lucky enough to be joined by some of the Plus Social Good connectors, advisors, and team members. We're joined by two of our connectors and advisors. These community leaders join us from around the world as leaders in their fields and regions who are dedicated to collaborating to tackle global issues and create opportunities for impact in their community. Carolina, if you wouldn't mind sharing a few words about yourself, and welcome. Hello, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm one of the Ploy Social Good Advisors, and I run in Brazil with a big team, the Social Good Brazil program. And uh, we organize annually a Social Good Brazil Summit. Uh, and as well, we have an online platform with Social Good uh, uh, cases from Brazil. And also, we organize a lab program for social innovators. So um, uh, every year we have the, the, the opportunity to people, Brazilians, that want to start new projects to get engaged and get some, some support and finance on that. And I'm here to uh, talk more about how you could get engaged and organize your own meetup during the Social Good Summit uh, in New York. Uh, as we, we have been organizing our meetups and also our summit. Uh, so, uh, my, my, oh, sorry, should I just introduce myself and I'm talking already, right? <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Um, actually, we have some time to talk about um, Plus, Plus Brazil in a little bit. Um, if we can move on to introduce Maria Ressa from the Philippines. Yeah, sure. Later I will talk more. Hello, uh, my name is Maria Ressa. I am. Uh, I've been a journalist for almost thirty years. But what's so interesting with social media is that it's really shifted me out of traditional journalism and moved us forward into this new space where Plus Social Good really has captured not just my imagination but of the people I work with. So one of the things we do since I I now run a startup called Rappler. It's trying to re-envision what journalism is with mobile phone technology and with social media. In two and a half years, we're now the third top online news site in the Philippines using the power of social media. It's really moving it away from top-down control and harnessing that bottom-up, exactly what Plus Social Good is about. Um, this is our third year hosting a, a social... We have large ambitions, so we've always tried every year to do it, to bring in at least a thousand people on the ground and then ripple out of the Philippines. I think what Brazil and the Philippines have in common is that we are hyperactive on social media. Uh, the Philippines, according to Comscore in 2010, is the social media capital of the world. We're certainly the largest Facebook market. So just a little bit of why we think this is so important. That's great, and, and the two of you are the perfect example of why we launched the Plus Social Community and why we're so lucky and proud to have you as, as members of it. Um, we're also honored to be joined today by one of our partner representatives, Boaz Paldi from the United Nations Development Program. Boaz, thank you so much for joining us today. I know there's a lot going on in the world, so your time is very precious. If you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about yourself and how UNDP plays a role in the Plus Social Good Community. Sure. Uh, my name is Boaz Paldi. As you said, I, I, uh, I run the partnerships and campaigns uh, at the United Nations Development Program. Um, I, uh, uh, we got involved with the Social Good Summit at first to try and make the Social Good Summit as global as possible, and that's what we, that's what we do every year with the Social Good Summit. And then we were very, very, uh, very interested in having a platform that would be a continuous engagement platform. That it wouldn't just end with the uh, with the social good summit after the three days of the social good summit, but would be a year-round engagement of all these people, and that's what we are. That's what we're. Well, that's that's why we're partners with Plus Social Good. That's why we think it's so important, and 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 that's why we continuously engage with with the community at the time of the social good summit, but at other times as well. That's great. 
Um, and finally, we're joined by a member of the Plus Social Good core team, Annie Rosenthal. Annie, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and saying a few words. Sure. Hi. Um, so I'm lucky enough to get to be part of the Plus Social Good team. I manage the digital communications, and so I get to run Twitter and Facebook and all those fun things. I've gotten to cover some amazing Plus Social Good events like India Plus Social Good, South by Southwest Plus Social Good, and U Plus Davos Plus Social Good. So really have helped work with the Plus Social Good community to make local conversations global. So excited to talk about how we can engage with Plus Social Good today. Great. Thanks, Annie. So why don't we get this conversation started with um, Boaz. Boaz, if you don't mind giving us a little bit of background on the Social Good Summit that's coming up September 21st and um, all of the global meetups that are happening around it. So we're very excited uh, that the Social Good Summit is only is, is less than two weeks away. Um, the, the main event will be in New York at the, 96 in, in the, at, at the 92nd Street Y with our partners there. Um, and we will be joined with, with the, our other partners, uh, of course, United Nations Foundation, um, and um, the Gates Foundation um, uh, and ourselves, the, the United Nations Development Program, and of course our media partner Mashable. Um, so, and that will be a two-day event in New York, uh, the 21st and 22nd. We have an incredible program. Uh, I encourage you all to go and, uh, and and see the program online. It's on uh, it's on Mashable backwards slash uh, SGS. Um, and you can see you can see the whole speaker list and the entire program there. It's very very exciting this year. We have a lot of very very top names, world leaders, uh, entrepreneurs, celebrities, all all coming together to discuss how social good, uh, innovation, technology, um, and and new media can create a better world uh, for us in the future. Our hashtag is uh, is is uh, twenty thirty now. Um, follow that hashtag during the Social Good Summit. It's it's uh, it's going to be a very very exciting conversation in New York. But except for New York, we'll have meetups in in, in many 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 locations around the world. Um, the United Nations Development Program offices around the world are engaging with the Social Good Summit and are um, are basically uh, setting up Social Good Summit locally. So we'll have a, a Social Good Summit, for instance, in Khartoum for the first time this year in Sudan. Um, very exciting program there, uh, looking at entrepreneur, entrepreneurs and technology in Khartoum. We'll have a Social Good Summit in Kabul in Afghanistan. We'll have a Social Good Summit in Ukraine during the time of, of, this, of this incredible turmoil in Ukraine. Our, our officers in Ukraine decided that it was a very, very opportune time to talk about other issues that, that, that are that are very very uh, important for the Ukrainian people and and we'll hear Ukrainian voices even at this time of turmoil. Um, uh, Rwanda is having a very large event in uh, in in a, in a university town uh, outside of the capital with 2,000 students that will be engaged in the in the, in the conversation. Uh, and this goes on and on. The list goes on and on. Um, you can find also all the meetups around the world on our website. Again, that's uh, that's Mashable backwards slash SGS, and and um, and you can and you can get engaged. Uh, the meetings are open. Uh, they're open for everyone. Uh, the United Nations opens their doors uh, during the Social Good Summit. It invites people into our to our home, and and we are happy to engage with all partners, all people, um, and be part of the conversation. We very much uh, we very much see our role as trying to bridge the digital divide that, that exists out there because not everywhere in the world uh, has broadband, not everywhere in the world has connectivity, especially in places like Sub-Saharan Africa, connectivity is very, very difficult. So we need to bring the conversation there in other means rather than just online and that's what we're doing. We're bridging the digital divide and we really want to encourage as many people to join us in this conversation globally. That's great, Boaz, and, and very, very impressive, and I think it's a real testament to why it's important for the UN foundational Foundation, for um, media companies like Mashable and um, Plus Social Good to get together to expand to audiences that we never thought we could reach before. So um, we're really excited, actually, to see how UNDP, Mashable, and Plus Social Good can support the global um, 2030 Now conversation in 2014. Um, Annie, can you tell us a little bit about how Plus Social Good was born and discuss the ways that we can get involved with the global conversations? Definitely. I'm so excited to talk about the Plus Social Good platform today. So a little bit about how Plus Social Good started. We just heard about the Social Good Summit and the global meetups from Boaz. So two years ago, over 140 countries came together to have these kinds of global conversations around the Social Good Summit. And people left so inspired about how the world can unify around social good. 
And then after the Social Good Summit, they wanted a next step. They wanted to continue that conversation. So 10 inspiring partners, the Bill Melinda Gates Foundation, the Case Foundation, Caterpillar, Cisco, Enactus, Mashable, the Rockefeller Foundation, the United Nations Development Program, the United Nations Foundation, and 92nd Street Y got together and created a platform where they could do that. And that's how Plus Social Good got started. Today, Plus Social Good is a global community of innovators, social entrepreneurs, and thought leaders united around a shared vision that today's connected generation can leverage technology and new media to create a better world. Plus Social Good discussions and events focus on three different things. They want to open discussions, synthesize learnings, and build the community. From opening the World Economic Forum to the public to reporting back on an important conversation in India, Plus Social Good is bringing together unlikely partners to make this world a better place. Joining the Plus Social Good community connects you to a global network of change makers and do-gooders. Take, ad take advantage of our amazing resources, like our online platform, which you can find at plussocialgood.org. We just launched a new platform, actually, on, in July, with, which is more dynamic, personalized, and user-friendly user than ever before. It includes amazing tools like a personalized, personal chat section where you can find users who have similar interests or geographical locations to you and privately chat with them to collaborate on social good. It also has an ask and answer session, section where you can discuss with experts around the world. And um, a social good summit section where you can find the latest on the social good summit and how Plus Social Good is covering it. Another great way to get involved with the Plus Social Good uh, community is to host a Plus Social Good event. By co-branding uh, your event with Plus Social Good, you, can, um, you get the full uh, promotional values of Plus Social Good. This includes uh, promoting content on the platform in our official event section, including the event and weekly emails that we send out to our global community, sending it out to our connectors and advisors, and uh, the full promotion on our social media channels. And these events can come in all shapes and sizes. It can be an in-person roundtable discussion of five people talking about women and technology that you then write a blog about, or it can be a live stream summit of 300 people. Uh, as long as we get that conversation from the local to the public through Twitter, blogging, Facebook, Google Hangouts like the one we're on today, uh, that's really all that we care about. Uh, events can also be completely online. You can have a Twitter chat or a Google Hangout and uh, talk about social good and technology. So really there's so many different and creative ways that you can get involved with Plus Social Good. And I'm excited to see how you engage with the community. Thanks, Abby. Um, in today's interconnected world, it's important to have such a platform for global collaboration. I'm sure you'd all agree. Technology has allowed us to break down the boundaries between geographies and sectors to create movements for change. We can use creative and powerful social media campaigns to raise voices and create commitments for a cause. There are recent famous campaigns like the Bring Back Our Girls campaign and the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge that I'm sure you've all heard of that have unified people around the world to create real social good action. Powerful social media movements capture a common spirit, inspiring people to act beyond their local boundaries and to enact change. You can use these kinds of creative campaigns when designing your own plus social good engagement. No idea is too small or too big. Plus social good community members have used every social media platform creatively to bolster their own events. During you, plus Davos, plus social good, for example, thousands of people around the world took to Twitter chats and Google Hangouts to share their priorities for the World Economic Forum. Plus social good accumulated those priorities and made them easy to read and shareable infographics. That infographic was then taken and shared at the World Economic Forum, bringing community voices like yours and mine to global leaders and influencers. Happy Hour plus social good used social media to tell a story. Taking place on the International Day of Happiness last March, a partnership with the United Nations and Pharrell Williams, Happy Hour Plus Social Good asked community members to tweet what made them happy during one specific hour. The idea was to flood the internet with happiness. The outpouring of responses not only brought eyes to the message of the International Day of Happiness, a UN holiday, but also engaged a large community in a time of global conversation. So when planning your plus social good event, try to think creatively when using social media. There exist many channels to explore and more are coming every day. Use them strategically to create a narrative around your event. And remember that social media is only one tool in your tool shed, not the end goal. Think about what you hope to accomplish from your campaign and then really sit down and strategize about how social media helps you. 
Social media is changing the way we connect with the world. It's being used to map areas of violence or danger. It's delivering health messages to marginalized populations. And it's connecting up on issues and directing our voices to global leaders. Your voice has always mattered, but now social media can help amplify for the world. Why don't we move away from social media for a minute and focus on two case studies of successful plus social good events around the Marlena, if you wouldn't mind talking us through your planning and execution process for the Social Good Summit in Brazil. Yeah, thank you. So, um, so this is also uh, the third year we organized the Social Good Brazil Summit as uh, in Philippines, uh, even Maria mentioned. And uh, I would like to point out like uh, five, uh, four things that we do that I think are very valuable to share with everyone that is interested to do your, your own summit. Uh, the first one is that we, we say we start by, uh, at, uh, we begin by the beginning, <laughs> which is to set uh, clear goals and what the, what we want to deliver for the people that are going to be watching and participating in the, the summit. So we have a very clear target audience, and we we like to think uh, why these people are going to be there. What is in it for them? Uh, what kind of topics are they, they want to talk and get engaged and they get excited about? Uh, so from that, we set our clear goals, what we want out of these one or two days events or three days. Uh, then we go to a next step, which is to co-create. So uh, we did that last year and this year again. So we get a group of our uh, key partners, stakeholders, target audience, and then we bring all of them uh, in a bit to talk about what are the topics you think are very interesting in Brazil right now and globally, that it really uh, makes uh, valuable we have the effort or of setting up a big event. Uh, and this is really, really good because it helps us out a lot to have a very interesting program at the end, a very interesting and engaging agenda. And then the third step is to collaborate uh, in engaging uh, all this target audience uh, so we can make sure uh, we're going to have a very interesting uh, and critical mass in the meeting. Because as important as it is the program and agenda for anyone that is going for a summit right now is to find very interesting people to talk to, to network, to exchange ideas, otherwise you can watch the live stream, which is very interesting as well, because we, we do both. We have the meeting and the live stream. But then uh, we look for, uh, we collaborate, so we have like over 40 different organizations in Brazil that they have different uh, approach and they are in different geographical areas. So we engage with them so we, we can have a big audience taking part in this space. And at the last, uh, my, my, my final suggestion would be to really go beyond the summit. So uh, how can you continue the conversation? How can you walk the talk and then uh, and to uh, start or continue to do the transformation and change you want to have in your community or in your country or in the region you're, you're focusing your summit or meetup to happen? So in the case of Brazil, as uh, uh, we, we have the Social Good Brazil program, so this is how we could uh, continue the conversation. So we, we have developed uh, real opportunities for people to get engaged. So uh, the idea of our summit is to make a very inspirational environment that people can later on really get engaged. And then we try to track what kind of uh, conversion, let's say, we're having it in terms of engagement. Um, and then, uh, uh, so I'm just sharing with you some of the steps we go through to organize our summit. And uh, this year is going to be November 5th and 6th. And we're going to be on live stream as well with Portuguese and English. And we're always in partnership with Plus Social Good and the Social Good Summit to make it happen. So you're all invited uh, to make questions and to watch the live stream. 
we look forward to it, and I, I'd remind everyone to keep um, keep an eye out on Plus Social Good. We can follow Carolina November 5th and 6th in Brazil. I'm sure it's an event that none of us want to miss. And thank you again. A lot of us will be tuning in on live stream, so we look forward to what's to come. Um, Maria, do you think you could share some experiences about pH Plus Social Good? Sure. Um, part of the key thing, the first year, and I think this is the excitement of anyone joining Plus Social Good for the first time, is really to, to create that climate of inspiration. So the first year we did it, we focused on just getting disparate groups together in a collaborative atmosphere where you try to inspire. But by the second year, and now coming into our third year, by the second year we decided that it was time to act. And so we focused it one month before Haiyan hit. We looked at Plus Social Good, uh, we looked at, a, we partnered with Google and with the UNDP here to try to create a platform for disaster risk reduction, a real-time reporting platform we called Project Ago. So essentially it's taking top-down government workflows and pushing it with the with Plus Social Good in between, harnessing the bottom, the social media, people who are on social media, and helping them with real-time reporting. So the first responders are actually able to talk directly to the people responding to them. We announced last year that we would launch this. It was launched. We've spent a year working with government, the Office of Civil Defense, the, the Climate Change Commission. Uh, our president, President Akina, will be speaking at the climate um, meeting at the UN for four minutes to talk about this. And again, if this happened, our, the plus social, PH plus social good happened one month before Haiyan, the, the strongest uh, typhoon to ever hit land globally. That was right before it hit the Philippines. Again, the Philippines is strange. We had get an average of 20 typhoons every year. Uh, we're supposedly the third most disaster prone country. Government cannot do it alone, so we decided that this is one of the things where we can harness people using social media, create, use this new technology to create a platform where people can report real-time embedded in their communities and then at the same time we will use a machine learning classifier this is something Patrick Meyer put together we built on top of this code where you can take artificial intelligence for disaster response this is now this year now we are talking about running workshops for local government officials, local government units, there are 1,800 of them through the Philippines. And then I guess, let me just end with what this year is going to be. We are, uh, my team is very, very ambitious, and they decided this year that we're going to be doing four days of Plus Social Good, and our partners this year, hold on, let me just, uh, I'm running out of batteries, um, two seconds, there you go. <laughs> yes. Uh, so my, um, this year we're partnering with Microsoft and part of the reason with Microsoft is because they have a project called uh, TV White Space. Trying to narrow that digital divide, they're actually using TV White Space to bring the internet to far-flung areas of the Philippines, to rural areas that don't have it. Um, they're working with the government and doing this and they've had some success. The second partner, we're, we're, our major uh, partner is really US-based Global Center for Journalism and Democracy. And this is where we want to take the experiences of Haiyan. Because in the age where everyone is a journalist, what are the challenges to doing that? How can you cover disasters? How can you cover typhoons? How do you deal with corruption? What are some of the things we can help anyone who is on social media try to give greater transparency and push greater change with that transparency? So we'll, we're doing two um, forums, two plus social good meetings in Manila, uh, and then two in Tacloban, which is really ground zero of where Haiyan is. And in that in Tacloban, uh, that's happening on September 19th and 20th to hopefully kick off the what will be happening in New York on the Monday. And what we want to try to do is we will be live streaming. Please join us. The speakers are pretty amazing. It's heart wrenching when you go directly to where this typhoon hit and you see the people still scrambling to survive a year later. Um, we'll be live tweeting, live blogging. Uh, last year we were able to try to chart the ripple of the conversation. When you have a thousand people on the ground, you can ripple to 200 million impressions. That's what we're trying to do. We want to bring the Philippines to you and bring you, bring the world to the Philippines.
That's incredible and so powerful, Maria. And I think all of us are really looking forward to tuning in on the 19th. I think it's an incredibly strong way to kick off the Social Good Summit in a country that's been in the news a lot and definitely deserves the attention. And I, for one, look forward to participating. Um, Annie, we've mentioned the incredible power behind social media, especially what we were just discussing now with Maria. Could you now please talk through how we can use social media to cover live events? Sure. So live tweeting is actually my favorite thing to do. Um, so it's a really powerful tool to bring your event to from a local conversation to a global stage. It also helps open closed conversations and documents and summarizes important dialogues. One of the most important things to do before you're going to live tweet an event is to fully prepare yourself. Live tweeting in the moment can be very stressful. It's second by second by second. So as much as you can pull together before the event, it will really help you manage that. Um, gather all relevant hashtags and handles before the event. Make sure you know the hashtag for your event um, beforehand so that you can tie your specific tweets to the larger story conversation. Um, also go through all of the speakers and list the handles and verify that those are the actual handles for those speakers because sometimes famous people have, you know, mock, mock accounts and um, you want to make sure you have the right person. You can create Twitter lists of all your key players to make it easy to follow along with the people that you want to follow throughout the event. Uh, and also you can create a toolkit for your use and for your partners to use so that there's already pre-written uh, pre tweets Facebook posts and other social media language that you can use throughout the day. One really helpful thing to do is to write an introduction tweet for each panel with the speaker's handles in it so that you can really just copy and paste that throughout the day. The more that you prepare before the event, the more ready you will be for the actual day. Another important thing to do for while you actually are live tweeting is to really focus on creating a narrative. Use a similar voice throughout the day on your handle. It would sound weird in person if a person started using different wording or different uh, and a different accent. It's the same thing for a Twitter handle. You want to use consistent language and consistent tone. Similarly, you want to use consistent images and calls to action throughout the day. This is all about creating a story that people can easily follow. And again, it's really important to follow the event hashtag. While you can be putting out important things from your personal Twitter account, people will only be able to see that if you tie to the grander story of the event through that hashtag. Um, so some Twitter live tweeting do's. Um, make sure that you keep an eye on the hashtag and mention streams. So on your Twitter account, you have a mention section. You can click on this and see who is in engaging with your specific handle. This allows you to reply to their questions or, um, you know, retweet interesting points. You also want to be following the general hashtag so that you can, again, retweet someone who says something interesting, reply, and really engage in a conversation. Um, you want to use both quotes and summaries. While it's great to just be quoting people throughout the day, it's also really interesting if you can pull back and share some general trends throughout the day. For example, we could say that the trends from this, this uh, Google Hangout have been that so, plus social good is awesome, social media is great, and live tweeting is the, is the most fun. Um, this uh, allows people who are following only on, on Twitter to really get the general gist of what's going on on the stage. Um, finally, um, you want to make sure that you proofread your your Google um, your live tweeting. Tweets can be deleted, but they can't be edited. Um, make sure you read your tweets two to three times before pressing send to avoid any silly mistakes. So I've created some good um, examples of tweets. So here's one um, that is an example of a quote. It says uh, at Annie Road two seven two seven, and that's who you're quoting. And then it has a little quote: "I love the plus social good community." Uh, and then it includes the hashtag of the, of the community, which is hashtag social good. And you can see here that we included a punctuation before the handle. Make sure you do this to show that it's not a reply. This highlights that it's a quote, and um, we'll put it in your general street. Um, here's a good example of a reply tweet. So this is if you want to discuss with somebody. You put the handle of who you're replying to without punctuation at the beginning. Then you say your point, and then include the hashtag. Uh, and here is a good example of a retweet um, tweet. So this, you say RT for retweet, the person you're retweeting, and then um, what they said, including the hashtag. So you can also see that here we put the hashtag within the tweet, which is a great way to kind of mix it up. So you saw that on all of those tweets, the hashtag was included because, again, that's super important in terms of bringing your tweets to the general conversation. So now some quick Twitter live tweeting don'ts. Make sure you don't over abbreviate. While it can be frustrating to fit your messages in 140 characters, if you over 
abbreviate your words, it won't make sense. Focus on the key point of your statement and really try to stick that into the 140 characters without losing the meaning. Um, similarly, don't write too much. While it is possible to express your thoughts over two or three tweets, it's not recommended because Twitter is really about putting forward succinct thoughts. And so try to, again, focus on your key message and fit that into one or two tweets. And then finally, don't dominate the conversation. It's great to be putting out information, but what people turn to Twitter for is really to engage. Make sure you're looking at your mentions tab and at the discover hashtag tag so that you're engaging in a conversation instead of just putting out information. Uh, here's one example of a bad tweet. So this person obviously did not um, proofread. They have a, a, a punctuation in the handle, and the handle is wrong. There's lacking punctuation there. They've over abbreviated so that you can't really tell what's going on. They've used too many hashtags, so it looks messy. And they included a very long link, which you want to kind of use a shortened link to make it look more professional. Also, they did one of six tweets, so this is going on way too long. So that's a, a bad example. Um, so live tweeting can be really fun and really exciting. It's a great tool to use throughout your event. Uh, also look at other platforms for live covering your event. You know, Instagram and Pinterest are great for creating an imagery around what is going on at your event. Google Hangouts, such as the one today, where you can pull out key uh, participants of your event and have them engage directly with your audience. Facebook and you know all of the new platforms that are coming out. So get creative and get engaged, and, uh, and it will be a great way to bring your conversation to the world. Thanks. Thanks, Sammy. That was a fun sort of analog way to discuss digital by holding up those signs. I love that. Um, so we know live coverage on social media is a great way to bring a local conversation to the world, but why don't we now move over to Boaz uh, from the UN Development Program. Boaz, how can we work to engage participants before and after a program? I think it's important to, uh, to continue the conversation. I think the Plus Social Good platform is an incredible tool to share knowledge, to uh, to have uh, what we call the UN South-South Cooperation, which basically means that, um, you know, outside of the developed world, outside of Europe and, and, and the United States, there is, there is there is a conversation that's going on with issues that are relevant much more in the, in the, in the, in the global South. And it's important that we have platforms that allow us to do that, and Plus Social Good is a, is a, is a perfect example of a platform like that. But, what's, but what, what's most important is just to continue the conversation around the issues that we care about through, through digital, through, uh, through these platforms, through all these forms of new media that we have at our disposal now, and all these incredible tools. It's really, it's really changed fundamentally the way that, that we look at how we share information, how we share knowledge, how we can you know, share experiences and best practices around the world by having these digital platforms that we can easily connect with. Google Hangout is a great, is a, is a great example of what we're doing just now of, of, of best practices. Um, and, 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 and those just need to continuously happen across the world. I, I can assure you that people who live in Rwanda are just as engaged with all that's happening in the, in, in, in the digital sphere as we are. They might not have the same bandwidth that we do, but the but the issues that, that are that are on their table are similar. Everyone everyone is working towards a a better future for for the for, for humanity, and it's, it's incredibly important that we all work together on this. Uh, we are just approaching the uh, the the end of the Millennium Development Goals and approaching the new development goals, the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, as we're calling them at the UN. Um, and and the, and those were were uh, sustainable goals that were they were very much crowdsourced through the world. The people the people joined platforms like My World and various other voting and, and engaging platforms on, on digital and, and in reality. Um, and, uh, and, and it's incredibly important that we all work together over the next 15 years towards 2030 to really try and achieve the, the development goals that the world has and really do it very much through, through digital. That's great, and, and a really good reminder, Boaz, for anybody who's watching the Hangout or who's tuning in later or following on Twitter, that um, you should be following the hashtag uh, social good, and if you're interested in creating your own meetup anywhere in the world, um, the website is mashable.com slash SGS. You can find the meetup section. You can sign up for your own. 
um, definitely the UNDP officers have been activating um, quite quite well this year, really strongly actually, and it'd be great to see this continue to be an organic um, uh, activation. So I actually um, wanted to talk a little bit to our audience. We've got some questions that we've uh, had submitted already on the platform through Twitter um, and some that we've thought of ahead of time, but I would like to invite you to make sure that you're tweeting um, your questions to us again using the hashtag social good. Um, the Twitter handle that plus social good is using is at plus underscore social good. The first question I have is uh, was actually submitted on the plus social good website. Um, and I think this is probably a good one for you, Maria. Um, there are different standards for platform success. What is the best way to measure outcomes? Wow, that is a forever discussion that we have. I think every single group will have a different definition of it, but I'll tell you uh, on our end, and again, you have to keep in mind I came from mass broadcasting, I came from television, and one of the things that we used to do was to just throw our stories into the black divide and not care whether anything happened. I think what technology is doing now is it's actually putting journalists and NGOs or media and NGOs together. Uh, technology gives us an action component. Now you can move people to act and that's on our end that's what we're looking at you know we set a year before very similar to Carolina a year before we decide this is what we want to accomplish this year here are the partners and you will be surprised you know four days of a, a plus social good meeting is expensive in, in this thing and we couldn't do it alone so it was really amazing when you set the goal and then you see all these other people and all these other groups walking that path with you and we benchmark it every year now so I'm, I'm old enough that I can look backwards and and every year with plus social good you know I see it evolving I see it changing based on what we accomplished the year before so I would suggest no matter how small no matter how large set a goal make the goal slightly out of your reach and then uh, try to accomplish something within that year. Take online action into real world, like the old, you know, the Leonardo DiCaprio movie, Inception. You know, people would go into the dream world in order to change reality. I think when we go into the social media world, in that technological world, we can change reality. And then that leads to the second point, which is there are tools that you can look at that will actually help you do this if you want to take it more seriously. I'll write something for Plus Social Good about this, but there are tools that are available now that you can look at. We um, look at communities. We map our communities. We try to figure out how can we continue to grow the community and actually move certain branches of the community to specific action points. That's great. Thank you. Actually, we're really looking forward to, to seeing that post. Um, a question that's coming on Twitter, and I'm going to ask actually all of you if we can keep our answers a little bit brief because it's going to be a tough one to keep short. Um, and maybe we can start with you, Carolina. Um, what has your favorite plus social good event been and why? Um, wow. <laughs> there, you can't there, I, I cannot say Brazil, right? Yeah, I know if you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I just been to the India Plus Social Good Summit uh, uh, in March, beginning of this year, and uh, for me it was such a special event because um, the, and the invitation and why I was there was because we really wanted to bring this house house collaboration and conversation going. So um, and right now, Sataj for me is also coming to the Social Good Brazil Summit. Um, and then uh, what, I, what I really liked is that uh, the idea of uh, bringing the uh, technology innovation to everyone, uh, so I think it was very, very valuable to make the summit in India. Uh, it's such an important country, uh, like all countries are important, but everything that is going on uh, regarding development there. Uh, and how can we bring the conversation to everyone? Uh, so uh, I think that was the reason I found very interesting and very important uh, and how we should think about uh, bringing Plus Social Good uh, to uh, as many uh, countries in terms of diversity of people get engaged, 
um, uh, diversity of languages, and and what I what I think is so interesting and make this conversation so global. Uh, and and I see in Brazil uh, that we bring this diversity in terms of stakeholders engaged, and I see globally. Uh, this happening as well, and for me, innovation only comes from diversity of opinions, uh, where we can have very interesting arguments and discussions. Otherwise, we are going to be talking with equals in a very small group. So, one of the things we think now is how can we engage uh, everyone and bring to the mass. Uh, everyone can think about what can I do right now to do something and with technology I have the power to do that. Uh, so we talk uh, sometimes in Brazil how can we break the bubble so we don't make it this is like an elite conversation but everyone can get engaged. So this is why I really loved uh, being part of the India Plus Social Good um, but it's very hard to say it's my favorite because I, I love the many uh, Plus Social Good Summit events. That's great. Thank you. Um, Boaz? That's uh, like asking a father to choose among his favorite uh, for, for <laughs> children. It's absolutely impossible. They're all, they're all amazing in their own way um, and, um, and, uh, and all very, very, very exciting. I agree with Carolina that the India Plus Social Good was an incredible event. Uh, we really uh, reach a new audience there. We got some fantastic partnerships going inside the room. Uh, it was very, very exciting. The energy was amazing. Uh, but I, I, I'll go back to our first social good summit if I have to choose and go to, to Malaysia and say that Malaysia was like very special because it, it was the first one. And that's when we launched the Plus Social Good platform. Uh, and uh, and I, really, uh, I really thought it was that we had a, a great audience, great room, uh, great people on the panel. We were so happy that some of our connectors could come from Nigeria and various other places around the world. Um, and so, so I, 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 it's very, very, uh, very hard to choose, but I would definitely say that Malaysia is way up there. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, uh, Maria. You mean in terms of, of well, I, I think actually getting connected to everyone in this way. Uh, this is, you know, again, I've been a journalist for a very long time, but very rarely have we gotten like-minded people from many different disciplines who have different goals to actually come together on many different goals. Actually, I think we embody this idea of more and more of less and less, right? We're Chris Anderson wrote that about the internet, but now it's no longer one big power blasting out we are more and more of less and less. There are fewer of us in our each of our countries, but if a social good can unite all of us, we can actually be far more powerful than any traditional power source. So I think, for me, if you ask me, it is this. It's, it's watching this evolve. It's working with people like you. It's working with Corey Fraser, who does have, a, I was tweeting with her as we're talking, you know, it's, uh, it is, amazing to see how we all come from different places in the world and again when I used to work with CNN it would take two weeks for ideas to cross now it's real time and that real time intent and emotion I think makes a huge difference so I'm I'm looking forward to this I think every single thing we do together makes us stronger and we're, we're looking forward to the upcoming Philippines event um, and to see see how that plays out and and related to that, I actually have, um, oh, Annie, I'm so sorry. Annie, will you tell us what your favorite um, plus social good event has been and why? Sure. Uh, again, it, it is very hard to choose, but I think one that really exemplifies the goals of plus social good was uh, Global Leaders Plus Social Good, which happened in Geneva. It was an event where the, the board of the United Nations Foundation met with students at the, the local university there. And um, they sat on stage, leaders like Kofi Annan, Muhammad Yunus, Ted Turner, and they not only talked to the students, but they listened to them. We had three student leaders stand up and talk about which MDGs were the most important to them. So this kind of inner dialogue between global leaders and, and people around the world is, is both what's amazing about social media, but it's also what's great about the Plus Social Good community. So that was one of my favorites, and I think it really just exemplifies the goals of Plus Social Good. Yeah, and I think it uh, was especially um, special for the people invited in the room because most people never get access to a group of global leaders really at that level in person and both on live stream and Twitter. So 
really well done to everybody who pulled that together, and I hope we get to continue to do things like that in the future. Um, I have a couple of questions in for Twitter. Um, one is, will the Social Good Summit be live streamed? The answer is absolutely it will be live streamed. It will be live tweeted, covered on Facebook, and covered on Instagram using um, an Instagram-based initiative called Instacore, spelled I-N-S-T-A-C-O-R-P-S, and that's the hashtag that will be used. Um, again, you can go to mashable.com slash SGS where you'll find the link to the live stream and it will be translated in all of the UN uh, languages so everybody can participate. And then the last question that's come in um, from Twitter, I'm actually going to push to you, Boaz, is what will be new at this year's Social Good Summit? So we've got some very exciting things happening this year. Um, the first thing that's going to be new is that we have a partnership with an organization called Audio Now that will allow people to dial in on phones in various countries around the world and listen to the audio stream of the Social Good Summit, and they don't need a smartphone. This can be done on a function phone. So people with low connectivity can dial in on, on their phones and listen to the Social Good Summit. We're very, very excited by that. Um, we have, uh, we have a, again, this year, we are going to uh, initiate a MOOC, a Mass Online Open a course, and that's going to, to start a few weeks after the Social Good Summit ends, with, again, with Wesleyan University and, and Coursera, um, and that's very, very exciting to us. Um, um, the rest of the innovations are, I'm going to leave that as a surprise for the actual summit, but it's going to be really, really amazing. You should all join in. Um, as, as Zane said, it's all, uh, it's all live streamed in seven languages. Um, all the time. You'll also be able to see live streams from various countries around the world. So you'll be able to choose to look at the live stream from Rwanda or from, or from Tunisia or from various other places around the world. And, um, and I really hope that you join us in, in the days uh, from the 19th uh, when Manila kicks off all the way through the, uh, the Climate Summit here at the United Nations where we have a plus social good event at the United Nations on the 23rd in, inside the Climate Summit. So I hope you join us for all those days. And then onwards onto, onto the UN General Assembly, the 69th General Assembly, starting on the 24th. And uh, thanks, Boaz. And I'd encourage everyone to remember that the hashtag for the Social Good Summit is hashtag 2030now. Um, so that's it. We're actually at time. I wanted to say a big thank you to everybody who's participating in How To Plus Social Good. We hope that you've learned a lot about the community and its potential to increase collaboration on social good and technology. And if you want the latest on Plus Social Good events and discussions, please do sign up for the Plus Social Good platform today. Again, a reminder that it's plussocialgood.org. We want to hear your voice, so please feel free to share blogs, questions, social media, or just general links with our community. Really, I want to say a huge thank you to the Plus Social Good community and to all of our panelists, Maria, Carolina, Boaz, and Annie, a big thank you for today. And to the writ large, as I mentioned before, plus social good community and all of the partners that participate in it. So continue to tweet your questions. It's at plus, un plus underscore social good. The hashtag is social good. And look out for the next plus social good conversation. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.